Is there a budget we're working with? $2,500 or less. Who's paying? What are you looking for today? Um, I definitely want yellow. Everybody okay with the yellow? I don't want to look like Big Bird up there. In February okay. 16th, I definitely want something okay. fitted. Um, okay. I like lace. Tell oh. me about your price point. I love the way it fits her. I saw it in her face. She felt like a million dollars in this dress. Courtney won't even come out of the room because nothing is coming close to beating that second dress. Um, where's Courtney? Number three, Bride Haley. In an emotional episode of Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta, Bride Haley's journey to find the perfect wedding gown takes a tumultuous turn as her entourage, led by her mother, inadvertently crashes her confidence. With a budget of $2,500 and a vision for a hippie-style wedding with an elegant twist, Haley enters the bridal salon hopeful, but soon finds herself struggling to maintain her composure. Is there a budget we're working with? $2,500 or less. Who's paying? I can't work no more overtime. <laughs> I'll be definitely looking for the price tag. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Everyone wants a good deal, but you need to look at the whole dress, not just the price tag. No, ma'am. My hand doesn't right over 500, honey. As Haley begins trying on dresses, her entourage's focus on budget constraints becomes evident. Her mother in particular adamantly opposes spending more than the allotted amount for the dress. The financial restriction creates tension and sets the stage for Haley's confidence to take a hit. The first dress Haley tries on fails to meet the approval of her entourage. Despite Haley's excitement, her mother's reluctance to spend beyond the budget casts a shadow over the fitting. Feeling disheartened but determined, Haley opts for a mermaid-style dress in an attempt to accentuate her figure and alleviate her self-consciousness. However, her hopes are dashed when her entourage responds with mockery instead of support. Overwhelmed by the negative feedback from her loved ones, Haley breaks down in tears, feeling defeated and insecure about her appearance. Tidge wedding? What's that mean, hippie vintage? I want the vintage part as in more elegance. An elegant hippie. That's half price, ain't it? Uh, budget on this dress is going to be around 23 24 Mom just cares about finding a bargain, and she is killing our bridal butt. It's different. You know, I was trying to cover my body up so much, and, and I like the way it fits. Sensing Haley's distress, Lori, the compassionate owner of the bridal salon, intervenes to uplift her spirits. Recognizing Haley's need for encouragement and confidence building, Lori presents her with a stunning gown that aligns perfectly with her vision and budget. With Lori's guidance and support, Haley tries on the dress of her dreams, adorned with complementary accessories that enhance her natural beauty. Stepping out to reveal her transformation, Haley is met with a unanimous approval and admiration from her entourage. To Haley's surprise and delight, the dress not only fulfills her vision, but also comes at a price well below her budget, costing only $1,800. Overwhelmed with joy and relief, Haley enthusiastically declares yes to the dress, making a triumphant moment in her bridal journey. With Lori's intervention and the unwavering support of her entourage, Haley emerges from the ordeal with renewed confidence and excitement for her upcoming wedding. Okay, Haley, so open up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, this is taking me back. Beautiful like that again. And I've seen it right in front of me. Haley, tell us, do you feel beautiful in this dress? I do feel beautiful, yes, I do. I love the way it fits her. I saw it in her face. She felt like a million dollars in this dress. And so what are you saying to the dress? I am saying yes to the dress. Yay! Number two, Bride Emily. In a poignant episode of Say Yes to the Dress Bridesmaids, bride-to-be Emily's journey to find the perfect dresses for her bridal party takes an unexpected turn as her frustration and resentment towards her bridesmaids surface in hurtful comments. As Emily enters the salon accompanied by her bridesmaids, she initially explains her perspective, emphasizing her desire for support and understanding from her friends as she navigates the wedding planning process. However, consultant Brandon quickly senses tension underlying Emily's words, noticing a discrepancy between her explanation and her behavior. What are you looking for today? Um, I definitely want yellow. Everybody okay with the yellow? I don't want to look like Big Bird up there. Yellow dresses that I want. You're dead set on yellow. Emily and I definitely have a lot of difference. Oh, it's really all about. Here's an example. 
my matron of honor. It would kill me if I put this on them. I feel like I just looked at dresses for my wedding not too long ago. With Laura, it's been a crazy roller coaster. With each dress the bridesmaids try on, Emily's remarks became increasingly critical and derogatory, causing discomfort and tension within the group. Brandon observes Emily's demeanor closely, recognizing that her behavior suggests deeper emotional turmoil than mere dissatisfaction with dress choices. Sensing the need for intervention, boutique owner Lori steps in to address the underlying issues driving Emily's behavior. Through a heartfelt conversation with Lori, Emily reveals the true source of her distress. Her strained relationship with her mother and her longing for the type of bond her maid of honor, Laura, shares with her own mother. Emily confides in Lori about feeling neglected and unimportant in her mother's eyes, especially during such a significant milestone in her life. The absence of the mother-daughter bond she craves leaves Emily feeling isolated and resentful. She is wearing a short Gipioni magenta dress with lettuce-looking bodice with a flowy skirt. That would look yeah. hideous on it. Being sweet and supportive, there's definitely something weird going on. So I want to see what Lori thinks about this. How y'all doing? I'm Lori. You must be the bride. I am. Have your wedding planning been going? This is a bonding experience for mother daughters. But if she in turn turns that anger on her bridesmaid, they were just they were just teammates, and I just want to feel, I guess, like she felt on that day. Contributing to her frustration and outbursts towards her bridesmaids. As Emily opens up about her feelings of hurt and longing, her bridesmaids respond with empathy and support, offering reassurance and a willingness to help her in any way they can. Touched by their genuine concern and understanding, Emily and her friends share a deeply emotional moment, shedding tears as they bond over their shared experiences and commitment to each other. With the weight of her emotions lifted through the cathartic exchange, Emily's perspective shifts, allowing her to approach the dress selection process with a newfound sense of clarity and appreciation for her friends' unwavering support. Together, Emily and her bridesmaids explore new dress options, ultimately finding the perfect ensemble that reflects both Emily's vision and the collective style of her bridal party. As Emily says yes to the dress, she not only celebrates finding the ideal attire for her bridesmaids, but also symbolizes a renewed commitment to cherishing the bonds of friendship and support that sustain her through the challenges of wedding planning and beyond. Through Lori's guidance and the compassionate support of her friends, Emily emerges from the ordeal with a deeper understanding of herself and a strengthened sense of connection to those who matter most in her life. Ooh. Laura is wearing a luminescent taffeta dress with a traditional sweetheart neckline and all <laughs> I love it. I love it too. Oh my gosh, you look good. This is what I was thinking for you. Yay! Today made me realize how good of friends I actually have. Number one, Courtney and Riada. In a dramatic episode of Say Yes to the Dress, tension mounts as bride-to-be Courtney, accompanied by her stepmom Riada, seeks the perfect wedding dress with the assistance of renowned consultant Randy. However, what should be a joyous and memorable experience quickly becomes fraught with emotional turmoil as Courtney's father interjects with crude comments and unwittingly exacerbates the situation. As Courtney tries on her first dress, she exudes excitement and anticipation, relishing the moment of feeling like a bride. However, her father's response dampens her enthusiasm, as he dismisses the dress as too plain. In February 16th, I definitely want something fitted. Um, I like lace. Tell me about your price point. You need something else, more lively. Really? I think so, just kind of plain Jane. Put it on and think that this could be the one. And then the fact that it wasn't the, as well received as I had kind of hoped. What do you think of Courtney, though? I like it a lot. You're not qu qu quite. We're thinking a little bit more pizzazz, maybe a little too simple. This initial blow to Courtney's confidence sets the tone for a challenging appointment, where her father's words become a source of frustration and insecurity. In contrast, when Riata tries on her first dress, Courtney's father offers a seemingly positive response, praising the gown and inadvertently intensifying Courtney's feelings of inadequacy and competition. Caught in the midst of a subtle rivalry, Courtney struggles to maintain her composure as she seeks her father's approval while also asserting her own preferences and desires. 
As the appointment progresses, Courtney's frustration mounts as she tries on dress after dress, hoping to find one that will meet both her own expectations and her father's elusive standards. Despite her efforts, Courtney remains fixated on the second dress she tried, sensing that it possesses the elusive wow factor she desires. However, her father's discouraging comment comparing the dress to chicken feathers leaves her feeling disheartened and uncertain. Caught in a cycle of seeking validation from her father, Courtney finds herself hesitant to explore other options, fearing his disapproval and longing for his affirmation. Amidst the tension and uncertainty, Randy intervenes, confronting Courtney's father about his inappropriate comments and their detrimental impact on Courtney's experience. With Randy's guidance and insight, Courtney's father realizes the significance of his words and the need to support and uplift Courtney during this important milestone in her life. I don't know whether he's clueless about wedding dresses or his daughter's feelings. The uh, most important thing to focus on. And I kind of thought it'd be the reverse, you know, that Courtney would look good yeah. in the mall and we yeah. might struggle a little bit with Rita's. You really want your bridal appointment to be your bridal appointment. Courtney won't even come out of the room because nothing is coming close to beating that second dress. Um, where's Courtney? Empowered by Randy's intervention and her own resolve, Courtney musters the courage to revisit the second dress, this time adorned with a veil. In a poignant moment of reconciliation, her father expresses genuine approval and admiration for the dress, finally acknowledging its beauty and significance to Courtney. With her father's approval secured and her confidence restored, Courtney embraces the moment and joyously declares her decision to say yes to the dress. In a touching conclusion, both Courtney and Riada find the dresses that reflect their individual styles and personalities, making a poignant moment of unity and a celebration amidst the challenges and complexities of wedding planning. Through Randy's guidance and the power of familial love and support, Courtney emerges from the ordeal with a newfound sense of confidence and assurance in her choice. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.